Hi, welcome to this presentation and demo on utilizing IBM Spectrum Protect with the Spare Fast P, also known as IBM Spectrum Protect High Speed Data Transfer. This video and demo is going to show you how to compare the results of utilizing TCP IP versus Fast P with the Protect Storage Pool command. So first of all, why utilize a Spare Fast and Secure Protocol, also known as Fast P? It's going to optimize the data transfer by improving your data throughput over a WAN. This is especially true if you have packet loss or latency on the network between the source and target server during your Protect Storage Pool. Asperafast is an innovative, patented, and highly efficient data transport technology, and it was ranked first in every WAN transfer throughput benchmark. IBM Spectrum Protect in version 716 was the first data protection software to integrate FASTP technology. You benefit from using Aspera FSAP when you have an impaired network. And we categorize an impaired network as a network that has a latency of greater than or equal to 50 milliseconds and a packet loss of greater than 0.5%. Now, networks vary widely. And so it is possible even if you don't meet these two criteria, you might still see improvements when you're doing your protect storage pools and node replications. FASTP enables you to use more of your provision bandwidth over impaired lines. However, it does not enable you to exceed provision physical bandwidth. Aspera FASTP works with Spectrum Protect version 716. It works with your protect storage pool and replicate node commands. Both your source and your target server need to be X Linux and at version 716 or later. And it works with directory container pools. In order to give Aspera FASP a try, first you'll want to obtain a trial license. You can do this by emailing alliances at asperasoft.com and include how many licenses you need, your company name, address, your phone number, and the email address of the primary contact. Within 24 hours, you'll receive an email response that contains two evaluation licenses. You'll want to copy one of those licenses to the Optively TSM server bin on your source server, and you'll want to copy the other one to your target server. You'll then want to set the permissions to 755 for each of the server license files. And to do this, you'll issue the chmod command. You'll want to verify that the default port ranges for a spare fast P, 15,100 to 15,199, are available. If they're not, you can set them by utilizing the fast beg port together with the fast P in port options in your DSM serve op file. In order to enable a spare fast P for your replicate node and protect storage pool commands, you can either go into the operations center under storage, replication, details, properties, and check the enable a spare fast P box, or when you issue the command line replicate node or protect storage pool commands, you'll utilize transfer method equals fast P. Let's take a detailed comparison of the TCP IP versus fast P. Assuming you've already installed your test license for fast P, you don't need to install any Aspera fast P code. That's included with the Spectrum Protect 716 servers. But I am assuming you have your replication pairs already set up. First, check the network latency. So on the primary Spectrum Protect server, you're going to issue a ping to the target Spectrum Protect server. In the results here, you'll see the time. And in this case, we see 50.3 milliseconds. So this is your latency. In order to get packet loss, first of all, on the target server, you're going to set up a listening port by issuing an iperf3-s-i5. And then on the primary server, you're going to issue an iperf3-c, the IP address of the target server, dash u, 5, dash t, 60. That'll connect into the target server. And you'll see the 
statistics appear on the target server. What we're interested in is this lost slash total. And here we ended up with a 1.3% packet loss, which is even higher than the 0.5 that we recommend as a minimum. Now we're going to do the comparisons for the TCP IP transfer of a protect storage pool. From an administrator command line on the primary server, issue the protect storage pool, the container name, transfer method equals TCP, which is the default, and max sessions equals 10, which is the default. You'll wait about five minutes, and then you'll issue a query session to verify that the com method is showing up as TCP IP. Next, if you want, you can use the inmon with the in option, and this is the Nigel monitor, to monitor the actual network. You'll observe a fluctuating kilobytes per second rate here under the trans rate. You will need some type of stopwatch because once you issue the query process, we want to start a 10 minute countdown. You do want to record the amount of data transferred from your initial query process. And do notice if this is going to be in kilobytes or gigabytes. Then you're going to wait exactly 10 minutes and issue another query process. Once again, record the amount transferred. And then you're going to take the second recording, subtract the first recording from it. Make sure it's kilobytes to kilobytes and gigabytes to gigabytes and then divide that by 600, which is 10 minutes times 60, which gives us seconds. And now you have your transfer rate for TCP IP. Now optionally, you could check the inmom again and just see what your live fluctuation is. And if you want another way to verify it, you can go ahead and cancel that process, that protect storage pool process and issue this query ACK log, search equals ANR 4980I, and this will give you a rough estimate by taking the amount transferred and dividing it by the minutes times 60, so that you have seconds. This is a rough estimate when you look at the query ACK log because we don't have the actual seconds here, we're only given hours and minutes. Next, let's go ahead and calculate the FASTP data transfer rates. This time on the primary Spectrum Protect server from the admin command line, you'll want to go ahead and open up the throttle for the network by issuing the set opt fast P target rate 750,000. And we did this for a 10 gig network. Next, you'll issue the protect storage pool container transfer method equals fast P max sessions equals eight. You want to wait around five minutes for all the sessions to start up. And now when you issue the query session, we should see not only TCP IP sessions, but also the FASTP sessions that they're paired with. The data is going to be going with the FASTP and just some server communications will go over the TCP IP sessions. Optionally, you can use inmon once again to monitor the kilobytes per second. We're going to get out that stopwatch again issue a query process, wait exactly 10 minutes, and then issue another query process. Then we're going to take from both of those query processes the amount of data transferred, and once again, pay attention, is it gigabytes or kilobytes, and divide it by the 600, which is 10 minutes times 60, so we get seconds. And so that'll give us a pretty accurate amount of data transferred that we can compare with TCP IP. You can also look at your inmon again and see if it's gone pretty much steady. Once the data gets flowing pretty well, that'll, that'll fluctuate a little bit, but not wildly. We can cancel the process from the protect storage pool and then go ahead and issue the query ACK log search equals ANR 4980I. And now we have other numbers where you can calculate the performance for both the TCP IP session and the FASTP session. Once again, when you're looking at the query act log numbers, pay attention, is it gigabytes or is it kilobytes? And make sure you're, when you divide it out by the number of minutes, you convert those to seconds. And remember, it's a little bit off because the query act logs don't report seconds.
So in summary, these are some of the tools that we'll utilize for the testing the performance, the pings, the iperfs, the nmoms, the query processes, query sessions, query act logs. And in addition, if you've got Operations Center up, you've been running your Protect Storage Pools for a while, you can actually go get a two-week summary underneath Operations Center Storage Replication Details, and you'll see the speeds for that two-week summary. Some things to consider about the FASTP results is, first of all, we use the set opt FASTP target rate 750,000. And the reason we use this is it opens up the throttle to 750 megabits per second when we're using the higher capacity networks like our 10 gigabit Ethernet. By default, each FASTP session is limited to using a maximum of 100 in addition, the Protect Storage Pool def defaulted to two sessions. And if you'll recall, we tested it with eight sessions. And so we've improved the original aggregate utilization. Node rep defaults to 10 sessions. So that would limit the aggregate utilization to if you didn't use the set fast P target option. Use caution when comparing fast P to TCP. And this is because overcoming latency on TCP by increasing the max session count might result in overutilization of the network bandwidth. And this is due to no throttling capability when using TCP. Another thing to note about the results is that we have network rates, which talk about the line speeds. And then we have the amount of data that we back up from our original production servers to the Spectrum Protect server, and that's a specific number of gigabytes. And then we dedupe and compress that data. So all we're replicating over to the target server is the deduplicated and compressed portions. And so the amount of data you're seeing sent in this Protect Storage Pool process actually represents a lot more data if you uncompress it and reconstitute it. Now that you've tested with the trial license, which was valid for 30 days, and you're ready to purchase a full license for each Spectrum Protect server, what you'll do is you'll go into Passport Advantage, and from there you'll be able to purchase the product, which is called IBM Spectrum Protect High Speed Data Transfer, and it has a PID of 5725-Z10. You'll then download the product and you'll want to install it on both your Spectrum Protect source and target servers. And you'll utilize the IB Installation Manager to do that install. You'll then want to remove your 30-day trial licenses from the Opt Tivoli TSM server bin and then restart both of your Spectrum Protect servers. Let's go ahead and start the demo. In the upper right corner, I have an xLinux source server. In the upper left corner, I have my xLinux target server. Behind here, I have my Spectrum Protect command line and my Spectrum Protect monitor. Let's start by issuing a ping from the source server to the target server. I'll see my latency, which is 50.3 milliseconds. I'll then go over to the target server and set up an iperf3-s-i5. This will open up a listening port. I'll go back to my source server and issue the iperf3-c, the target IP-u-i5-t60. And now on the target server, I'll start seeing information coming across about the lost packets. Remember, we recommend at least 0.5% lost packets for a spare efficiency. In our case, we're getting 1.3%. We're now going to kick off a TCP IP protect storage pool with protect storage pool, next gen pool, transfer equals TCP, max sessions equals 10, which is the default. We can see the process starting. If we issue a query session, I can verify that indeed it is using TCP IP. If I go into nmom, I will start up nmom, and then I will select the n option for network. And now on my source server, I can see the kilobytes per second that are flowing between the source and target server. In this case, we're in the 3,700 kilobytes per second range. You will see these fluctuating. As the processes become more steady and transferring data across, they will level out. 
Now we're going to take some measurements from the source server. We're first going to issue a query process, but we want to have a stopwatch on hand so we can make sure we're timing it exactly. So we'll start off, issue a query process, and then we want you to wait exactly 10 minutes and then reissue that query process. Now notice on the first query process you'll want to record the amount of data transferred, and then after 10 minutes when you reissue that query process, you'll want to record the second amount. You'll then be able to subtract the second amount from the first amount and divide by 600 seconds. Notice for this quick demo, I did not wait the full 10 minutes. We can now cancel the protect storage pool process, and we want to take a look at the activity log to see what a rough estimate would look like. Here we can see that in total we had 2,346 megabytes processed in 14 minutes. If we do the division here, do recall that this is a little bit of a rough estimate because we don't have the actual second count showing up versus when we did the query process with the stopwatch, we had a very specific amount of time elapse. Let's go ahead and look at FASTP now. The first thing we're going to want to do is open up the throttle on the network by issuing the set opt fast P target rate to 750,000. This is a 10 gig network that we're working on here. This will open up the throttle for each session to 750,000 kilobits. We will go ahead and kick off another protect storage pool. And this time when we do the protect storage pool command, we will specify transfer method equals fast P and we will issue max sessions equals eight. Okay, we got process three started. We can see that over in the monitor. We'll soon be seeing both TCP IP and fast P sessions kicking off. The TCP IP sessions are paired with a FASTP replication session. Going across the TCP IP will just be the server chatter between the source and target server, and across the FASTP we'll be sending the actual data. We're going to issue a query session. Here we have our FASTP sessions that are paired with the TCP IP sessions, and you'll see we're already up to 3 gig of bytes transferred in this short period of time on the FASTP sessions. If we look at the NMOM, we'll see we're anywhere from 680,000 down to 480,000. Right now we get a little bit of fluctuation. We're now going to issue a query process so we can take a look at the initial amount. You will want to have your stopwatch ready so that you can be timing exactly 10 minutes. When the 10 minutes is up, you want to issue another query process and then we're going to compare the amount of data transferred and divide that by 600, which is 10 minutes to times 60 seconds. This method is more precise than the query act log because we are able to account for actual seconds. For this quick demo, I did not wait 10 minutes, so any calculations I did would not be exact. We'll now go ahead and cancel the protect storage pool process. If we issue the query act log and search on the ANR, 4980i message, we'll see both our TCP IP protect storage pool results and our protect storage pool with FASTP. We can then once again use these numbers, the amount transferred in the lapse time, and get a rough estimate. Remember, activity log does not show seconds, so it gives you a rougher estimate versus if you did the query proc with the stopwatch recording the exact time. From our query act log results, you can see FASTP had stellar results, and in comparison to TCP IP, it was racing across the same network. For FASTP, we saw about 271 gigabytes transferred in 13 minutes. And for TCP, we just saw 2.346 gigabytes in 14 minutes. So our results show two orders of magnitude improvement with FASTP. I hope you'll give this a try, and I'm sure you too will see stellar results when you enable FASTP for your protect storage pools on networks that are impaired. Thank you.